Who was the better iconic first baseman in the 1980s, Don Mattingly or Keith Hernandez? There's no doubt that when it comes to first baseman, Keith Hernandez was a defensive genius. But hey, don't make the mistake of sleeping on Mattingly because he too was no slouch in the field. In fact, Mattingly had the sweetest swing until he ran into back trouble. And while Hernandez held his ground as a solid hitter, you wouldn't be wrong for saying Don Mattingly brought significant power to the table. Little wonder that both these players could boast an MVP trophy with their name etched on it. When we break it down stat for stat, talent for talent, and achievement for achievement, which of these two guys was actually better, Hernandez or Mattingly? Of course, you'd agree that there's absolutely no way to put these two heavyweights head to head without trying to understand their individual prowess and impact first. Let's kick it off by looking deeper at Don Mattingly. There's no denying this one, Mattingly absolutely dominated the diamond during his peak, but sadly, his peak was short-lived. However, we also have to admit that Mattingly's journey to the big leagues was nothing short of impressive. Starting in the minor leagues with the Oneonta Yankees, he got his career off to a fast start, hitting 349. Then he would go on to smash expectations with the Greensboro Hornets the next season, leading the league with a 358 average and snagging the MVP title. However, it wasn't all smooth sailing for this young slugger. Concerns lingered about his speed and power. Some even debated switching him to second base. Yet Mattingly kept swinging, hitting 325 with the Columbus Clippers before finally making his major league debut in September 1982. Obviously, he left his mark in the minors while there, earning spots on all-star teams and MVP consideration. Now to the big leagues, Mattingly's major league debut was low-key but memorable. He stepped in as a late-inning defensive substitute against the Orioles, then got his first taste at the plate against the Brewers, popping out to third. But it was against the Red Sox that he truly made his mark, notching his first major league hit with a clutch single in extra innings. By 1983, he was splitting time between first base and outfield and hitting a respectable 283. His first homer came that year against the Red Sox off of John Tudor. However, it was in 84 that Mattingly truly shone. Becoming the Yankees' full-time first baseman, he exploded onto the scene, batting a stellar 343 and earning a spot in the All-Star game. That year, the race for the batting title with teammate Dave Winfield came down to the wire, with Mattingly clinching it on the final day of the season when he delivered a scorching 4-for-5 performance. He didn't just win the batting title, he also topped the league in hits, doubles, and total bases. In fact, some people say it was this year he cemented his place as one of baseball's brightest stars. Hernandez didn't start with the Mets. In fact, he was already an all-star with the St. Louis Cardinals. He'd won the World Series with them and had several strong offensive seasons. In 1979, he shared the MVP with Willie Stargell. Obviously, he was already a star for the Cardinals. Unfortunately, though, there were so many things wrong in this relationship, and tensions flared between Hernandez and Cardinal management, especially manager Whitey Herzog. Actually, it was more of a problem with Hernandez than the team. You see, Hernandez was using cocaine, and despite his on-field success, the coach felt he was a bad influence on the team. So the breaking point came on June 15, 1983, when Hernandez was traded to the New York Mets for pitchers Neil Allen and Rick Ownby. On the way out the door, Herzog didn't mince words when he labeled Hernandez as a cancer on the team and he stood by the decision to trade the star without regret. Upon joining the Mets, Hernandez changed his number to 17. Of course, the team switch was stark and ridiculous, especially when you consider that he went from a championship team to one on the brink of 100 losses. But hey, this man was determined to silence Herzog's doubts and in the process, he ignited a fierce rivalry between the Mets and the Cardinals. Under the new manager Davey Johnson, the 1984 Mets soared to their first winning season in nearly a decade, finishing 90-72. and 72. And of course, Hernandez emerged as a pivotal leader in this journey, securing second place in the NL MVP race and spearheading a dynamic young core featuring stars like Daryl Strawberry and Dwight Gooden. No doubt, Hernandez's defensive prowess was legendary. He redirected relays with precision and positioned himself strategically, deterring bunts with his aggressive charge. Opposing managers feared facing him, and some even likened bunting against this intimidating player to challenging Bill Russell under the basket. In fact, Hernandez's knack for picking off runners with lightning reflexes left a lasting mark on the game, prompting umpires to tighten defensive positioning rules. Ultimately, both Mattingly and Hernandez were both electric. However, you can't deny that Mattingly's career offensive numbers were just slightly better, but then, what about their defensive numbers? Keith Hernandez's defensive prowess was unmatched, earning him a remarkable 11 Gold Glove awards, which is a record that stands to this day. 
His skill in handling low throws with finesse, executing acrobatic plays, and salvaging numerous errors for his teammates established him as a defensive juggernaut. No doubt, with such a stellar defensive track record, Hernandez was the kind of player everyone wanted on their team. This man embodied acrobatics, athleticism, and aggression on the field. Plus, renowned for his diving stops, impeccable ball handling skills, and fearless approach to charging bunts, he was a defensive force to be reckoned with. So even though advanced defensive metrics were absent during his era, there's little doubt that Hernandez would have dominated the leaderboard season after season. As for Mattingly, he also made defense look so easy when he was on the field. When it comes to defense, Mattingly was amazing. His remarkable 996 fielding percentage, averaging just four errors per 1,000 opportunities, ranks among the best in baseball history. Four errors in every 1,000 opportunities? That's high-level defense. With nine Gold Glove Awards, which is the second most for a first baseman, his defensive prowess is undeniable. Yet Mattingly's impact isn't limited to the field alone. His prowess at the plate is equally impressive. A lifetime batting average of 307, 222 home runs, and three consecutive seasons with over 200 hits showcases his multifaceted brilliance. Obviously, these two juggernauts were top-notch on defense, but how about their team play? How did each player impact their teams? Mattingly's best ever season could be the 1984 season with the Yankees. That season, Don Mattingly and Dave Winfield raced neck and neck for the American League batting title. Of course, Winfield surged ahead early in this battle, his average soaring to 377 by July. But as August rolled in, Mattingly closed the gap, gripping the lead by early September with a 352 average against Winfield's 351. It was also dramatic that this battle for the batting crown gripped New York City's baseball fans, dominating headlines in papers like the Daily News and the Post. For the Yankee faithful, this duel became their own pennant race, injecting life into Yankee Stadium despite the team trailing the Tigers by 15 games. The scoreboard often lit up with each player's batting average to the ninth digit, fueling a special kind of frenzy. A Yankee player hadn't clinched a batting crown since Mickey Mantle in 1956, and never before had two Yankees top the league's hitters. Well, in the end, Mattingly emerged triumphant with a 343 average, outpacing Winfield's 340. But there was more to come. In a strategic move during the offseason, George Steinbrenner snagged Ricky Henderson from the Oakland A's. The Mattingly-Henderson duo unfolded just as Steinbrenner had hoped. Mattingly thrived with Henderson setting the table, racking up a league-leading 69 RBIs in just 83 games. Plus, after the All-Star break, Mattingly's performance soared, boasting a 340 average, 26 homers, and 76 RBIs in the final stretch. By season's end, Mattingly boasted a 324 average, ranking him third in the American League. His 35 homers and 145 RBIs, which was the most by a lefty since Ted Williams in 49, solidified his place in history. Mattingly also topped the majors in doubles with 48 and snagged his first gold glove that year. Plus, to cap it off, he clinched the American League MVP with 23 first-place votes, sealing a season for the ages. But what about Hernandez, you'd ask? Well, after grappling with drug-related issues in 1985, Hernandez bounced back in 1986 to bat 310, ranking fifth in the league with 83 RBIs. That season, his 94 walks led the National League, and he clinched his ninth consecutive gold glove. Plus, he earned a spot as a starter in the All-Star game for the first time. No doubt, Hernandez's stellar performance was instrumental in propelling the Mets 108-54 to a first-place finish in the East Division. That same 1986 postseason, he geared up for his second playoff appearance, aiming to replicate the success he experienced with the Cardinals in 1982. The Mets faced a tough challenge against the Houston Astros, led by MVP runner-up Glenn Davis and formidable pitchers Nolan Ryan and Mike Scott. But despite the Astros' resilience, the Mets triumphed in six games, including a memorable 16-inning clincher. Now, heading into the World Series against the Boston Red Sox, Hernandez started slow at the plate but quickly found his rhythm in Game 3, contributing two hits and a walk. And as the series intensified, this baseball dynamo's steady performance helped the Mets force a decisive Game 7. Plus, although the Mets initially trailed 3-0 in that game, Hernandez's clutch single in the sixth inning drove in two crucial runs, igniting a comeback. With this player's sacrifice fly in the seventh, the Mets secured a commanding lead. Despite a late surge from the Red Sox, the Mets held on for an exhilarating 8-5 victory, clinching the World Championship. And if we're to judge, that's where Hernandez edges out Mattingly. Hernandez was a key leader on two World Series championship teams, while Mattingly's team struggled to make the playoffs during his career. Both players were iconic players, 
Look at Mattingly's numbers and you'd be convinced he's your man. He was everywhere, battling with injuries while still putting out his best each season. But Hernandez was making unbelievable plays and leading his teams to the World Series wins. There's no denying the fact that they both had a huge impact on baseball during their time. While Mattingly was slugging with the Yankees, Hernandez was giving the Mets something to cheer about every game. Ultimately, who is the best lies in the heart of each fan. Who do you think was better, Mattingly or Hernandez?